All right, what is up? We are here for the Tatsunoko versus Corona Community Combo Contest, or as I like to affectionately call it, the TVCCCC. I am here with my consistent co-commentator and America's favorite Krillin, J.M. Crofts. How's it going, man? Hey, what's up, guys? I mean, you don't have Dato Doya here, so I don't know if we can say that I'm the favorite <laughs> Krillin, but I appreciate it anyway. You always be number one in my heart. Um, then we have TVC Discord Czar and Builder of Supercomputers, President Magikarp. How's it going? Oh, good. Yeah, looking forward to seeing how creative people can get today. Yeah, yeah, we've got some good ones. And then uh, way down in the bottom here, we've got Level 3 X Factor, who ran the CEO Tatsunoko vs. Capcom side tournament last year. How you doing, man? Good man, I am the world's most inconsistent commentator. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Love to hear it. All right, so we've got um, seven combos today to get through, and just so everybody understands uh, exactly what the judging system is, each one of our panelists has a little layout next to them here for four categories that they're going to be grading each combo on. The first one, S is for style, that's like how good is your swag, how stylish is your combo. O is for originality, that kind of speaks for itself, I think. How unique is your combo, have we seen this before? Uh, D uh, is difficulty, and I mean, you know, obviously we won't have all done all of these combos, but I think we'll get a general idea and everybody says how difficult they think this combo looks. And T is technical. I did want a swing score for, you know, how much damage you did and how many hits you have, even though I didn't want that to be sort of the main focus of this. So those are our four categories. We will add all the scores up, so a maximum of 120 points, 10 points for each category, are attainable. And then we're going to see who has the highest points at the end of the day. Let me go ahead and turn off my background music yeah, here. I did put some on. All right. So um, the first combo that we wanted to look at today here, let's go ahead and just get right into it. Um, first combo comes from SB Philos 4. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and he went with Alex and Batsu. So one thing I did want to say about this combo is he said he executed this on a Wiimote. So uh, I don't know if the judges want to oh, this is that one. take that uh, in any particular way, but uh, that is what it is. So. Are, we, are, are we supposed to give a bonus to the difficulty score because it was done on Wiimote? Uh, that's up to you. I'm like, I'm pretty hands off on the rules. This is this is like, you know, whatever you guys think. There's uh, some people did some pretty creative stuff that like uh, I wasn't expecting. And like, you know, I'm just going to kind of give these bits of information to you guys where I have them and, and let you be the judge. That's that's what you're here for judging. So right. let's take a first look at this combo. Oh. All right, so that's our first combo. It like full kills Tekka Man, which is a <laughs> which is a strong start. All right, uh, let me get back to the judging screen here. Um, yeah, any 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 initial thoughts from any of the judges? I, I like the incorporation of the short hop variable air raid tag. You really don't see that in a lot of combos. Yeah, that is pretty cool. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think in terms of like swag, it's not the craziest thing I've ever seen, but. Uh, in terms of like effectiveness and I think difficulty and execution, uh, I think he did really well. And this seems like the kind of thing that actually wins you a match, which I think is important for a combo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, if not for the variable error. Uh, oh, sorry, continue. Yeah, I think it was definitely one of the more a more practical combo. Yeah, I could see somebody yeah, using something like this. It's a match. yeah, obviously it's like a lot of meters, but um, other than that, this is definitely like. Uh, I think a real like kind of applicable combo in a way that some of the ones that we will see today definitely aren't but we'll get to those later so i wanted to to take a sec real quick and go back through it in uh in a little bit of slow-mo i'm going to turn the volume off for this so we don't get weird robot voices but uh and just sort of go through the components of the combo real quick before we go into the judging so we're starting off with the alex combo here and like you guys said right there we've got the uh the short hop he did a uh a, a flash chop into a Baroque and then a jump so that he could get the grounded uh, VAR, which you don't see a lot. Bossy does kind of a normal ground string into level three here. And then actually 
does an early fireball, so it hits meaty on Takaman as he falls down there, rather than trying to follow up with a launcher, which is pretty cool. Does the four dive kick loops off of that. Calls into Alex, and even without resetting here, kills off Takaman. So, you know, pretty strong combo. Executed on a Wiimote, seems like usable. Got like a lot of really cool components to it there. Um, and let's see what the judges think. We'll start. I like the theming too. Yeah. I like the theming too of two of the beefy burly boys. Yeah. No, it's a it's a cool team for sure. So. Um, I'm, I'm kind of dubious about the practicality of it. The more I think about it, because <laughs> I mean, on one hand, like yes, it does kill Takaman, and it looks like it's relatively like easy to execute. But you also have to consider that both your point character and your assist would both have to have red light for Baroque, and you definitely have to be cornered at the very least to make the short hop very practical. So. Um, definitely stylish. I just don't mm. know about practicality. All right. Well, uh, why don't we go ahead and get some scores? Since you're on the top, we'll start with you this time. Cross for style. We've got a seven. Originality. How do we feel? Uh... Also a seven. Uh, difficulty. Nine. And technicality is eight. Yeah, technical is eight. That's, I think, reasonable since it kills Tekaman. That's that's pretty big. Nine for difficulty. You want to talk about that just real quick? Uh, Was there yeah, the, the I mean, Wiimote just, bias in there? The Definitely being done on the Wiimote, um, doing that short hop VAR like you guys talked about. Uh, and the Basu loops, not super easy as well. So I was pretty impressed by the execution on display here. Cool. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Up next, President Magikarp. What did you think for style, first off? Uh, for style, I definitely think the Batsu dive kick loops and the incorporation of the grounded VAR really added the style points for this. So I'm going to give it an 8. 8, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like the grounded VAR too. What did you think for originality? For originality, um, you definitely don't see a lot of grounded VAR combos, um, especially ones that involve multiple tags back and forth, so I'm going to give that an 8, too. 8 as well. Uh, difficulty, what do you think? Difficulty, also going to give it an 8, just because I know that the Batsu dive kick loops are really difficult to execute, and um, it's definitely a combo that's difficult to practically set up given the resource constraints, so yeah, I'll give it an 8. Cool, cool. And the technical swing. Technical, uh, I'll give that an um, 8. Because um, Batsu dive kick loops, again, difficult. But um, I don't know, man. Just something about this just doesn't seem like it's particularly like S-level difficult compared to some other things I've seen. OK, so 8s across the board from President Magikarp. Uh, last up, level 3 X-Factor. What did you think about the style? How stylish was this combo? Style, I think that it was pretty swaggy. There was some good stuff in there, like the short hop and all that. Um, it did incorporate some, you know, basic stuff like the bread and butter and all that kind of thing. But overall, I think I would give it a seven for the style. Seven for style. Okay. And what about originality? Originality, I'm also going to give a seven because, like I said, there is some stuff I've seen in there before. Uh, mm -hmm. But there is some stuff that you don't see often, so I think it bumps it a little above average as far as that goes. Okay. And difficulty. Difficulty, I'm gonna give it an eight because even though, like, you, like uh, we've said before, some of the uh, some of the things we have seen, and it's a little situation dependent. I know how hard it is to do stuff on that damn Wii mode, so I'm just <laughs> amazed that anyone can do a basic combo on that thing let alone anything that inco incorporates short hops and crazy <laughs> stuff like that so i think that's the highlight of this combo is the fact that you were actually able to do it on that mad props for that nice nice and the technical swing and i'm just uh, another eight for the technical just because eight. damn wemo <laughs> all right very cool all right so i have the the full score tabulated down there which i'm going to mark down for myself but i am going to keep that all secret until the end just to uh add a little air of mystery for everyone in the uh in the chat there uh, and that is the score all right 
It has been noted. All right, so up next, uh, we've got one. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, we have a combo from a, a very special person named Issei. This is uh, all the way from Japan. Issei, some of you might know him. He came out to uh, Animevo a couple years ago with some of the Japanese TVC players. And he is also like definitely a lab monster. Even before we met him in person, he was always a person I knew for posting really wild combos on Twitter. So I am very much looking forward to this one. Uh, our first international combo here is Issei. Oh, I'm on slow-mo. Sorry about that. Let me fix that. <laughs> we don't want that. Uh, speed normal. Okay. All right, so that is from Issei. Oh, hang on, let me uh, let me go ahead and delete these old scores here. Um, yeah, and this <laughs> this is the kind of stuff we would come to expect from him. So, I mean, first of all, let's let's call it what it is, right? This is a combo with three six machines in it. Um, a special, a, a super that is normally impossible to combo without uh, like his level three. Uh, he's got three of them in a combo there. So, uh, anybody want to have anything they want to say initially about about this thing? Definitely about the triple six machine, but just just from the get go, that combo was just a cavalcade of what the hell is going on because, like, almost immediately he tags in another character, and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, there I don't even know in that combo. It made it it made it look like an MVC three combo. Like that's something you see in that game. Hmm. I, I didn't know that it was possible to combo off Six Machine by himself, so that blew my mind, and <laughs> I don't really think I understand what we just saw, so... Yeah, oh, yeah. I think this is a good one to, to walk back through in the slow-mo, so why don't we go ahead, I'm going to set up the slow-mo correctly before I switch over this time, and then we'll, we'll take another quick look at it here. Oops, turn off the sound. All right, so first of all, and I didn't... I didn't expect people to do this, but he has the enemy Joe the Condor start this out by calling a bird missile, right? Then he does kind of a normal extension here, does the red hot kick for soft knockdown, The starts the six machine, the bird missile picks Joe up, his own bird missile, drops down here, and I've never seen this extension before. He does a shocking pink, brokes it, goes up into the air, does another red hot kick, which gives him enough time to connect another six machine, this is a thing that you can do with Soki, where it restands when the first hit of his level two charge super hits, and then that just puts Joe in a grounded, uh, like dizzy state that allows for him to DHC into a third six machine. Bravo! It's pretty cool stuff. It's very, it's very creative, and this is one of the things where again, I, I started getting combos like this, and like my first reaction was, was like, is it okay for him to be using the the enemy bird missiles to keep the combos going? And I was like, well, there was nothing I said that you know, like <laughs> forbade that. So yeah. I'm gonna see if the judges like that more or less, or we'll we'll leave that up to fate, you know. So um, why don't we go ahead like and start talking? Yeah, this is very cool. Why don't You're we go right ahead and death start? Combo where he... <laughs> yeah, very death level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so why don't we? we we'll we'll have a little bit of time to talk about this when we're talking about the scores. So we'll go opposite opposite order this time. Start from the bottom. Level three X Factor. What did you think about the style on that combo? Um, I just want to be the first person to say this on stream and go. Ten. <laughs> ten. Yeah, ten for style on that one. That was inc that was incredible. It reminded me a lot of a desk combo. Like if you watch his videos, he incorporates a lot of like the enemy character into their combos to do like extra stuff that's like super situational and it just increases the value of something like that. And like I said, that looked like a damn Marvel combo. I was so impressed by that. <clears throat> yeah. Um originality. 
Originality, again, I, I, I didn't even know you could combo that many six machines together in this game. I'm giving that a 10. Cool, cool. Difficulty. Difficulty? Like we said, I, I don't think we even knew how he did that, so I think a 10 for difficulty 10, 10, is, 10. is just, you have to. And then the technical number of hits damage <laughs> score. That one, um, just so, just so I don't sound like too much, uh, <laughs> too, um, you know, of a fanboy about it, we'll give that one a nine instead. All right. <laughs> don't want to stay on you say too hard on stream. All right. Uh, very nice. So really high scores from a level three X Factor. How about uh, President Magikarp? What did you think for style? Style, I'm definitely going to give it a 10 just because the, the finished product was so flashy and beautiful that I'm still kind of, I still got a little bit of color in my face from the smile of just watching that happen. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, what was the score again? 10. Uh, 10? Easily. Yeah, 10. Okay. Yeah. Uh, originality. Originality, I'm also going to give it a 10 because out of everyone that would have thought to submit a combo, I don't think anyone was immediately thinking, okay, how can I start a combo off of bird missiles? <laughs> but not my bird missiles, someone else's bird missiles. Yeah. So definitely unconventional thinking here. Uh, difficulty. Um, this is the part where, all right, on a technical level, in terms of, like, difficulty of, like, linking certain moves, the only part of that that looked like it might have been hard to do was picking up off the six machine from the shocking pink. Uh, the timing of that was really the only part that jumped out of me is particularly difficult to do. The combo routing was definitely difficult to think of. So I'm going to give this, like, a 9. I don't think it was, like, absolutely, like, difficult, difficult, but definitely the thinking required to route the combo was definitely um, on another level. Cool, cool. And technical. Um, this is damage hits, wise, number of hits and damage, yeah. Damage-wise, um, still impressive. Um, for the resources, not too unexpected. I'm going to give that an 8. 8, all right. And JM Cross. Let's start off with style. What do you think for style? Uh, yeah, I'm going to give style a 9. I guess maybe I should talk about these. Last time I just showed the numbers. Uh, I'll give it a 9. I think uh, it's really cool starting the combo with the opponent's super. Definitely, like, we've seen combos where someone throws, like, a Guile Sonic Boom and then runs full screen yeah. so that the Sonic Boom hits them midway through. That's what it reminded me of. Really cool idea. So 9 for that. All right. Um, originality, mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a 10. Mm -hmm. Did I do that the right way? A 10, just because, uh, yeah, it was really creative, really cool, uh, a unique idea that I think was really neat. Um, difficulty, I'm going to give an 8. I think I'm on kind of the same page as President Magikarp. Like, the, the actual ex execution of this combo, I don't think is anything too beyond the realm of human ability but like <laughs> the thinking of coming up with it and the crafting of the combo i think is where yeah. this really shines oh. and then for technical i'll give a nine for basically you know the same reasons like i, I think it was a very creative idea maybe not like the most mind-blowing execution ever but uh a, a really really cool combo for mm -hmm. sure it looks like we we lost uh x factor and then he came back there Let's give him yeah, I think second. he's just reconnecting. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me, can I adjust these windows here? Can I like Oblivion three sixty? Who hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just yeah, we were talking slow. earlier about how this is the this is the dudes with beards show. Yeah, it's also the dudes <laughs> with varying amounts of hair show. This is this is definitely quarantine life at this point. You know, it's hard out there. Yeah. Or a game for sure. Um, so I do have the oh jeez, and then it went back. All right, I'm making this work. Don't worry, guys. This is professional stream production here. Don't don't even worry about it. All right, I'm gonna mark down the total score that Issei got here out of 120. Uh, 12. Oops, I said it out loud. Um, <laughs> uh. So, <laughs> Issei, 
Issei is someone who is on Twitter. I've retweeted his some of his combos. He's got some other ones that he didn't use for this contest that are also extremely cool. So if you follow the links from from my retweets or whatever, you can find those and uh, and drop the boy a follow if you feel so inclined. Uh, up next, the we have the hairline in the chat. I just want to say <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> we're all we're all doing our best out here. Come on, come on. I, you know, you're only young for so long. Uh, up next, we have a combo from a perennial uh, tournament participator who we all know and love, James, who is a Frank West specialist. And he also went with Frank for this combo contest. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Oh my gosh! It's What the hell? Wow. All right. Oh, shit. I forgot to oh, I can say it. oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean for <laughs> the one thing about this, for anyone who doesn't uh watch if there's anybody here who watches this but hasn't watched the TV Corona tournaments, he does this kind of stuff just like in match sometimes. <laughs> and I don't know how he does it, but uh the man is yeah. a genius with Frank West. <clears throat> So did anybody have any sort of initial reactions yeah, to that combo? I can't wait to watch the slow-mo just because I'm <laughs> still wondering exactly what caused Roll to explode. Yeah, <laughs> Roll dies halfway through the combo. <laughs> yeah. and, and like hitting the zombie specifically so that it would catch for the relaunch was genius. And I don't you how the hell did he come up with that? Yeah. <clears throat> I also, I really like kind the of the... The fun factor of that combo is incredible mm -hmm. yeah that was really fun it was just so fun to watch <laughs> i like kind of the the like pacing and like the jaws style build up where you see that zombie walking and he's just <laughs> comboing the opponent <laughs> and you i know that zombie Done. look it's it, it's chekhov's gun here i know that zombie's gonna yeah. come back so. <laughs> you establish it <laughs> yeah exactly all right and so and let's go ahead and take a look at this in slow-mo slowly and all of a sudden he's there <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one in slow-mo. So we start out with a zombie directly into the level one grab super, right? Now this one, you're always... Uh, you're not showing it on stream, by the way. Oh, I am not showing it on stream. Woo, thank you for letting me know. Okay. Um, so we've got a zombie straight into level one grab super. Watch this animation play out. And you can pick up off of this, OTG. That's... Uh, it's normal stuff, but he has the double back dash, picks up with the blue shopping cart, does a knee drop, and you don't see this too often. He does a team up super, whiffs the grab, rolls to the other side, picks up with the blue cart again, roll knocks him back the other direction and dies to a zombie falling from the ceiling. He puts his back to the corner, does a couple knee drop loops here, zombie is there, kicks the zombie into Polymar. Knee drop again, blue cart, he's back to the corner again. Actually manages to build up two full bars after being down to one bar and go into level three at the end here to finish it. I still don't think I understood how roll died. Could we? How could roll we died? Yeah, again? for yeah. sure. So um, we that should be, yeah, right about I, here. So when he yeah, does the... Right. Uh, the OTG roll super and whiffs the, the command grab super, he calls oh, then... that and calls a zombie from the ceiling that comes down and kills roll. And that's actually the zombie that then stands up, starts walking, goes the whole way across the screen, and then gets kicked into polymer like a full 10 seconds later. For the relaunch. That, that is some galaxy brain shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. How do you even begin to construct something like that? <laughs> Yeah, James James has like the deepest pocket full of uh Frank West combos of probably anyone in the world. He he's obviously put like tons of time into this. Um So, let's go ahead and start talking about scores. We'll go back to the original order JM Crofts. What did you think for style? Yeah, I think I'm going to give it a 10 for style. 10 for style. Um Obviously, like I was talking about, that that build up and uh, payoff of the zombie, I think, was really creative. Plus, killing your own character during a combo, I think, deserves some special recognition. Uh, so that was really cool. Yeah, there's a couple people. I, I really appreciate it when people put in. It doesn't really. It's not technically part of the combo, I guess. But people put in little nice touches like that. I always really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so how about originality? Originality, I'm going to give a nine. I feel like James is maybe a victim of his own success here. But, you know, being a Frank player that we see in the tournaments every week, a lot of this was really cool and uh, original stuff. But there's also aspects of it where it's like, yep, that's how Frank combos. I've seen this before. So I'll take one point off just because, you know, it, there's a decent amount of usual Frank stuff. But the, the stuff that was unusual was very, very cool. Okay. And uh, difficulty. It's hard for me to judge. I'll give it a nine. It's it's hard for me exactly to tell how hard this is to do. There were some aspects where I was like, that looks really hard. Uh, but also some stuff, it's just like, okay, we're OTGing, we're looping. Uh, mm -hmm. So nine is my best guess, but it's definitely hard for me to tell exactly how hard this looks. Okay, and technical? Uh, yeah, I'm also giving that a nine. Uh, basically, same as difficulty, like... This is a very technically complex combo, mm -hmm. but I don't necessarily think that individual pieces are anything completely out of control. But uh, similar to the last one we saw, it's a very creative idea and very well executed. All right. Very nice. President Magikarp, what do you think about these style points? Style points, I don't think anyone's questioning a 10 out of 10. Uh, that It absolutely deserves a 10 out of 10. Um, just parts of that had me... Um, you, you ever watch a combo and just feel very smooth-brained? <laughs> that, that, that's how I felt watching that. So I'm, I'm gonna easily a ten out of ten. Okay. Uh, originality. Originality. Um, I kind of agree with what Kraus was saying in that James is kind of a victim of his own success. Um, I think some of the uh, combo routes that were taken were definitely uh, more creative than what I've seen in the past. I think killing your own character mid combo. Is kind of on the same level of originality as what we just saw you say, um, where he started off bird missiles and then mm -hmm. this one killed his own character. So it's definitely unusual, but um, a lot of it is the Frank West Infinite kind of looping back and forth and shopping carts bouncing around the screen. So I'm going to give it a nine because nine. It, it's it very familiar elements that we've seen as parts of other Frank combos. All right. And difficulty. Difficulty 10, uh, because just watching that, I know for a fact, having actually dabbled with doing Frank West Infinite in the lab, that getting that many reps is not easy at all. <clears throat> and um, just the the creativity and the foresight required, like the, the innate character knowledge necessary to know exactly where to place the zombie on the screen so that you can hit it to catch <laughs> the character... It, with enough active frames in order to get them again for a relaunch is absolutely insane. So that that's a 10 easily. All right. And the technical. Technical, damage-wise, uh, very impressive. Now, um, it, uh, that would have killed any character. Mm -hmm. Any character. No question. But what I kind of, looking back on it, I don't think he used a Baroque cancel, did he? Um, did he use Baroque? I don't oh think no! I did. believe I believe he did. Uh, did he? I think so. Let me let me take a look. I thought it was like right after the uh, the super at the beginning here. Maybe or, or maybe after the uh, this part. Maybe after this. No, because like I, watching it, I was I could have sworn this man did not use a single baroque cancel. Yeah, you might be right. He might not use baroque. Yeah, which it which adds to it for me. That okay. is extremely impressive because he didn't even use all of the resources he could have. All right. Very cool. to get there so that's a 10 a 10 Easy. very nice level 3 x factor what do you think about style points for this combo like magic said i think it's just undisputed 10 as far as style goes that 
that pause is like watching a Neil Green movie. You're <laughs> thinking to yourself, what the hell is going on? But you're also extremely entertained the whole time. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. All right. And originality. Uh, yeah, originality, a 10. Um, like, like I said, I love these combos that incorporate these weird factors, I like really the work. opponent's moves and like the, mm. I'll call it the friendly fire bonus in this combo. I love seeing stuff like that. Like I said before, I don't even know how you begin to construct that combo in your head. Where does the first thought come from that then chain links into everything else? Like that's, that's galaxy brain level Frank stuff. Okay. So that was another 10, uh, difficulty. Difficulty, again, I'm going to give that because, like Magikarp said, it doesn't even have a Baroque. He's not even using all of the resources available to him. And difficulty, if, if it doesn't come from the execution, it comes from the concept and how you construct it and make everything work. Because just trying that, just that stuff alone can increase the complexity of a combo, even if it might be a little more easier to execute on paper, as it were. Mm. And uh, technical, hits and damage. Again, I'm going to do the opposite and just say screw it and give it all 10s across the board. All 10s, like the Damage whole way. Damage is incredible. No Baroque. Lots of hits. Like, I loved it. Like, something that brings a smile to my face like that as I'm watching it is just, I can't not super high score. It was so much fun to watch. Bravo to James. All right. So I have noted James' score, and I will not say it out loud on accident this time. Um... And then <laughs> let's see who we have for the next combo. Ah, up next we have uh, someone who many of you might know. We have Obi Wan. Nice Moomin Rider back Ooh. now. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, can you guys still see the combo? Are we yeah, we still see it. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, so Obi Wan, many of you might know, he is from Croatia. He came out to Frosty Faustings both this year and like several years ago. He also came out once uh, to compete. He also often runs the brackets for our uh, Tatsunoko versus Corona events. So he's someone we appreciate very much. And he he's has the MVP. Yeah, for sure. Keeps everything running very smoothly. Value community member. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and the high ground. he has submitted a combo here. So let's go ahead and take a first look. <laughs> All right, so that <laughs> that is uh, big, big Ryu, damage. <laughs> yeah, Ryu and Polymer full killing Karas and Yatterman one at the same time. Uh, any initial thoughts about that one? Beware the car; it comes back. Big damage. Yeah, it comes back. <laughs> Something that is blowing my mind is that not only have we not had like any of the same concepts repeated, mm -hmm. like. This one is a happy birthday combo, two characters. The last one, a character on your own team died. The, the one before that, you know, we got hit by the enemy intentionally to make a new combo. Like, these are unique concepts mm -hmm. for every single one. So I'm really impressed that uh, the originality of all these entries is really awesome. VC players are very creative. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's been one of the cool things about, I think, the community in general. Is we got people who uh, play and have success with and come up with really cool stuff with, like, a really broad swath of the, of the cast. We see a lot of different characters. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this one in slow-mo. Uh, we've got... Let me turn the volume off there. Yeah, so he calls out the assist, the enemy assist there to... Uh, get the the happy birthday uses the baroque for the aerial tatsu extension which retains grounded if people didn't know that i just noticed this he started with one bar for this combo yeah, he started with one bar here actually whiffs the shinku hadoken here taunts i don't know if you guys saw the taunt but then chases the car back the other way with uh with a tatsu and helps to finish them off and kills both characters now karas is Extremely low health. Yatterman one, yeah, you know, a little, little more normal. So, a um, lot of damage here. Uh, why don't we go ahead and start with level three X Factor this time? What did you think about the style points for this combo? 
l like we were saying before, like so far all these combos have all incorporated one specific theme. This one was Happy Birthday, mm -hmm. and I love the he said the Baroque extension to keep the grounded. There was a taunt in the middle of it. He whiffed the Shinko Hadoken, and then the car the car coming back the other way reminded me of uh, Bison at the end of the Street Fighter Two movie, or he's just driving a <laughs> truck towards Ryu. I mean that was fantastic. Um, yeah. So what am I, am I ranking style now? Right? Yes, the style. Yeah, that's that. That's another one, like a, a ten for style. That was fun to watch, and just the fact that it was a happy birthday and just obliterated their health bars. All right. And uh, what do you think about originality? Um, originality. Um, I'll give it one one point lower only because I'll give it and because happy birthdays are impressive. But they're not. There are things things that we have seen a lot, and there are a lot of like really good happy birthday setups that can double KO a character. So still really good, but not as high as the previous one, I think. Okay. And difficulty. What do you think about difficulty? Difficulty. See. Hmm. I don't know a lot about Ryu, so I don't know how difficult that combo actually was from a technicals perspective. But um. I'll give it an 8 only because it does require the setup of the assist coming out right at the beginning and there is some cool stuff in there like the taunt and everything but um yeah it just it, I don't nothing struck me as incredibly complex like in some of the other ones. Okay. And uh last one technical. Also uh give an 8. I think it was impressive. It did kill both of the characters did a lot of damage there were a lot of baroques in there so he was taking advantage of all the resources but again not as restricted as some of the other ones therefore making them a little bit more complex again i don't want to sound like i'm knocking the combo it's really good really fun really impressive but just a little lower than some of the other ones i think we've seen so far all right and president magic card what do you think for style Style, I'm going to give it a 10 just because I have such a deep spiritual appreciation for the car super. Uh, <laughs> especially incorporating it into a team hyper combo in a way that lets you actually pick up after it. Uh, mm. Very creative routing, um, very stylish execution, so that's definitely a 10. Okay, and originality. Originality. This is the part where I'm going to sound like a little bit of an ass because most of that was very very basic like day one day two ryu stuff just loop with a baroque cancel um the most original thing out of that combo was definitely the use of the team hyper combo into the car and picking up after it mm -hmm. and then also that the assist was called at the beginning to sort of set it up i'm gonna give it a six all right uh difficulty difficulty um again very basic Ryu combos um, that set up the whole situation. Um, it, I would give it a point for difficulty just because um, it would require a lot of situational awareness for you to catch your opponent with their assist out, kind of like in this situation. Uh, I'll give it a seven. Seven? And technical. Technical is where this redeems itself in my eyes because damage-wise and relative to the resources used, he started with one bar. I'd argue that this is probably the most resource-efficient combo we've seen today. Hmm. So I'll give it a 10. 10, all right. And President Magikarp, or not President Magikarp, Jam Crofts, you're up there. Um, all right, uh, style. <laughs> uh, I'm glad that uh, President Magikarp took the hit for me here. I was worried I was going to be the hater of this one. I'm going to give it a 7 <laughs> on style. Um, yeah, I, the, the only Ooh. really stylish thing in here, I think, was like the whiffed taunt. The, the whiffed uh, team hyper combo. Those were pretty cool, but a lot of this was like, yep, Ryu, you know, Light Life 5M, 2M, 5H Tatsu, Baroque, repeat it. Like, we've seen combos like that before. So uh, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't the most stylish, I think. All right. And originality. Uh, originality, I'm also giving a seven. Um, a, a lot of the Ryu stuff was stuff we've seen before, but I do think that. The fact that it's a happy birthday was a good idea. I love the car super, obviously. Uh, so anytime that gets used, I get hyped. So uh, it was pretty cool. Just, uh, you know, some of the reuse stuff that we're used to seeing. Okay. And difficulty. Difficulty, I'm going to give a six. It seemed like 
I, I don't want to hate, but it didn't seem like a very hard combo to me. I think maybe given a little bit of practice, I could have pulled off this combo, which is definitely not something we could have said about anything we've seen so far. <laughs> and technical and yeah i agree that technical kind of redeems it i'll give it a nine um it's only like what 10 percent baroque one meter start and he kills two characters that's really really hard to do uh so amazing damage for the amount of resources used so very impressed by the uh technical aspects of this combo yeah i i agree with that i think that it was really impressive on that front on but end. but yeah like uh you know, a big a big chunk of it was pretty normal reuse stuff. So um, I have marked down Obi Wan's score, I'll and it shall remain Mark. secret. Um, up next we have someone who we all we all know. If we have seen uh, tournaments recently, we have Omega Zero. This the Mexican is earthquake himself. The Mexican earthquake himself. Yeah. Uh, Omega Zero, yes, is our is our resident uh, uh, consistent Mexican participant in the uh, Tatsunoko vs. Corona series, and also actually a Zero player, in spite of his name being Zero. Uh, he does actually play Zero as well. <clears throat> so we'll wait for Level 3 X Factor to get back here real quick, and then we will go ahead and look at this combo. Right. I'm looking am forward I, to this. Am I to back, to, laptop. Uh, back to normal speed? Okay, cool. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so that is by far the longest combo that we received. Um, just so everyone understands exactly how this is working. Later. Yeah, so everyone understands exactly how this is working. Mechanically, uh, hit stun deterioration does not kick in until you start juggling someone. So as long as you keep them grounded, you can keep looping things, uh, which is kind of one of the key things that this combo is based off of. Any uh, initial thoughts from the judges? Omega, this is a Tatsunoko uh, contest, not Marvel 3. Oh, wait. <laughs> I was getting PTSD flack of one player only zero combos in my head. <laughs> well, technically speaking, this would be the OG zero loop, uh, one player only, just by virtue of when the game was released. <laughs> yeah, to me, this was like a very triggering combo. This awakened <laughs> some things that I don't want to remember being hit by zero uh but i'm able to look past that aspect and uh, i think in terms of uh number of hits and amount of difficulty this seems like one of the highest ones we've seen so far yes yeah, so um i don't think we need to put this on slow-mo uh i think we can just like watch this once more with sound off at normal speed uh but there, we can... there's one part that i actually do want to see in is that possible to just see part of it in slow-mo uh sure yeah and we can we can go back let's let's sort of walk through it first and then you can tell me what you want to see the, the part where ryu baroques actually looked really really sick so i do want to see that oh, again, okay but... all right so we'll take a look at it so we're starting off with you know the ryu stuff here Kind of does a long combo. Again, part of the point is keeping grounded, and this Tatsu Super right until the end does retain grounded, and then he DHCs into Sogenmu. So now he's got just Sogenmu loops 
on deck against a grounded opponent, <clears throat> and he can just kind of go ham until that runs out. Then he Baroques to once again use a grounded VAR. Does sort of the same thing, and here, yeah, we'll we'll do that for you real quick. We'll uh, we'll slow down this right here so we can oh, yeah, see it. This looks sick to me. Yeah, so this like double jump heavy extension is big body specific, but it's something Ryu can do. So what he does here is he goes for the Hadoken, which keeps grounded, Baroques, jump C on the way up, jump C again on the way back down, and then an air Tatsu, which once again uh, retains grounded. And we'll go back to normal speed. Uh, which once again we do the uh, the Super Tatsu into the Sogenmu, get another, you know, 50 seconds of combo out of this, link off the double busters every time. And then Zero uses the Ryu assist to create enough, you know, hit stun to get Sogenmu again one more time. Use up all this time getting these links off the double busters. And then... After that's up, he's used basically all resources, so he just goes and does as many sort of solo zero loops as he can. These are two extensions that you can use back-to-back uh, -to, -back to get level three busters, which allow you to rejuggle, and then he can't get one for this one, so he just finishes with the DP at the end of the combo. Very long, uh, impressive Mega combo. Mega Zero is in the chat, and he says that he uh, he wanted to point out that if it the Tatsu Super does not retain grounded if the last two hits connect. Yeah. So he had to incorporate that in as well. Yeah, you have to DHC out of it before the end because it will it will knock back right at the end. All right, so um, let's start with JM Cross this time. What did you think about style for this combo? Yeah, on style, I'm going to give an eight. Um, I think. Uh, a lot of this was just watching zero loops, which I don't think is particularly stylish. But there were some aspects that I really liked. Like I mentioned, the Ryu Baroque hitting on the way up I thought was really, really sick. Uh, and there's some little touches. Like, I like hitting with four crouching lights for absolutely no reason, just because you can. Stuff like that, I think, does add a little bit of intangible uh, appeal to the combo as well. Yeah, he definitely made sure to just maximize each and every one of those little hits, which was yeah. fun. Uh, what about uh, originality? Originality, I'm giving a seven. Um, a lot of the zero aspects of this combo, I feel like, were just things that we're used to seeing zero do. Uh, but I think the concept of leave them grounded for as long as possible and extend that to be uh, the longest combo that we've seen all day today, I think that was a clever idea. All right, cool. And difficulty. Difficulty, I'm going with a 9. This combo seems really hard. Uh, I'm not a 0 player, so it's hard for me to judge how hard the loops are, but just there were a lot of aspects of this combo to do. In a combo this long, that's a lot of opportunity for drops, so uh, well done on getting all of that stuff out. And technical. Technical, I'm, I'm going to give a 10. I, I think what, what other combo would we say is worthy of a 10 in technical? It was... It was how many hits and how much damage. I think we killed Karos like five times over. Yeah, it's uh, 303 hits <laughs> and I want to say 85 billion damage. I went back and checked it, and it is definitely enough damage to kill even Gold Lightan if Gold Lightan were comboable. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think oh that kind of goes without saying. In, in my opinion, I think that's a 10 in terms of technical difficulty. Yeah, for sure. All right, President Magikarp, what do you think for style points? Uh, style points, there were... Flashes of brilliance, a lot of the same. Uh, I agree with Crofts. I think that the the style of the combo was kind of worn a little bit by the repetitiveness of the Sogenmu loops. Uh, but I did like uh, certain elements like keeping grounded to maximize hit stun decay, um, the timing involved with the Tatsu cancels, and um, the big body specific um, double heavy drop. Uh, was also very stylishly implemented. Uh, I'm going to give it an 8. 8. Originality. Originality. This Okay. Original thinking for keeping them grounded to maximize hit stun, absolutely. But in terms of combo routing, I don't know. Uh, really, It really didn't seem too completely out of the box, aside from... Uh, the routing surrounding keeping the the victim grounded 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a seven. A seven. Okay. Uh, Difficulty. Difficulty 10. Uh, No questions asked about that. Just because I personally, for the life of me, can't execute the zero relaunches, so I know those are kind of tricky. And um, knowing exactly when to cancel uh, the Tatsu Supers repeatedly, multiple times throughout the combo, in order to maximize damage, um, mm-hmm. and also maximize your hit count, which uh, I'm just going to say it. He was totally playing for the 10 out of 10 out of technical on this one. Um, but yeah, uh, 10 for difficulty. Yeah. I, I know I couldn't do that. All right. And uh, because I have to ask, what do you give it for technical? 10, Yeah. <laughs> Then this is the, the largest hit counter we've seen of any combo to me, and it's the longest. I mean, that goes without saying. And the damage was very impressive. Um, he even built back a bar at the end there, which is kind of wild. Yeah, it's very cool. All right, level three X-Factor. What do you think for style points? <laughs> this combo was was the epitome of that clip from The Simpsons where, Stop, he's already dead! <laughs> Um, but like, uh, like Crofts and Magikarp said, there were, there were things that we have seen, like anyone who's played these versus games where zero has been in them is having, like I said, PTSD flashbacks of just that, oh my God, over and over again. So there was a lot of cool stuff, like Croft said about the, uh, the Baroque cancel with Ryu. And I give a lot of props for canceling the Tatsu, like getting the max damage out of that. So mm-hmm. I'll give that an eight for style. All right. Very cool. And originality. Originality. Again, I feel like I feel like when you go last, you kind of copy a lot of the same points of the others. But um, I'm going to give that a seven as well, because it was uh, there were some things that, you know, we don't see often, but it was a lot of just, you know, while technically impressive, the same zero stuff we've seen across uh, two franchises practically at this point. Mm-hmm. And difficulty absolutely a 10 because even if we've seen it before that doesn't make it any less hard to do and i also have terrible execution so um i know how hard it is to do things like that like it's like tnt infinites and marvel or these kind of zero loops it's like it's hard to keep it going for that long Mm -hmm. especially when like you're doing it specifically to show off when you're trying to swag like that it Mm -hmm. increases the pressure and makes it even harder to do i think yeah and uh, because I have to ask, what about technical? Number of hits and damage. Absolute 10. That was like, someone in the chat said the Dynasty Warriors combo, where you're just like <laughs> killing a ragdoll over and over and over and over again. All right, very cool. I am marking down Omega Zero's score and then getting the next combo queued up. Ah, yes, the next one is from another... Uh, tournament participant that we know. Uh, This is Pops. Pops uh, plays Duranjo in tournaments a lot, and we have a Duranjo combo on deck from him as well. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let me make sure my playback speed is set to normal here. And then, or wait, did I do that right? Boom, okay. All right, so that will let me kill the scores from the old one here. So that is Duranjo Beautiful Joe. There are two raw tags in that combo and also a um, a burst bait into a counter, which unlike doing a burst bait with like broking and punishing, it does keep the combo counter going because it's first frame active there. So this is another one that I wasn't expecting to see something like that. And I'm going to leave it up to the judges how much they like that or not. Um, first, did you guys have any initial thoughts about, about this combo? Um, going back, right before she does the burst bait counter, mm-hmm. could you replay that for me real quick? <laughs> yeah, sure. I can do that real I'm quick. I'm just I'm just trying to determine 
Because yes. um, I know she baroked early because you have to barrow with Garacho to get any sort of damage going. But, okay, no, he didn't. All right. That, that was going to be a big deciding factor for me if I wasn't uh, totally clear on that, but now that I am. Um, very brilliant use of the counter super. Um, I just, I feel like a burst that late in the combo would probably, it would have probably happened earlier in a real match, but still very technically impressive. All right. Um, well, why don't we go ahead and just, there was, there was kind of a lot going on in this combo. This is one where there was a few different distinct parts. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at it in slow-mo and, uh, and walk through the different steps or actually this is not in slow yet slower all right so we start off with the duranjo combo we've got kind of the normal duranjo start here where she calls the tree and baroques that lets her set up like a lot of advantage for herself to get this kind of stuff going taunt the kiss hits and then raw tag into vijo vijo does a launch he's got the mock speed down here, so he gets the link on the ground into level three. And we'll just sort of have to watch this in slow mo. I'm not going to really mess with it in the middle of play back here. So you can go, you know, get a drink of water or whatever if you need to. Level three hits, falls down here manually times the Duranjo raw tag to get the combo again here. Two hits, and then hits the burst with the counter. And the counter super does a ton of damage, so then this is enough then to kill off Ryu. All right, so let's go check back in with our judges, and we'll reverse the order again. Start with level three X-Factor. What did you think for style points on this combo? Um, the thing about this combo, I feel like it's kind of the opposite of some of the ones we've seen so far, where we've had ones that were very stylish and a lot of things were happening, like the, the Ryu combo, but maybe it wasn't as technical. I feel like this is the inverse of, of that. I feel like it's a very technical, well-constructed combo, but it isn't very flashy. There's not a lot of hype or excitement to it, even though it is a very good combo. So for style, I'm going to have to give it a little bit of a lower of a 7. 7, all right. And originality? Um, originality, um, we, like you said, we did see some, uh, some standard stuff like the Duranjo set up into the tree and all that. But when you start counter super and you start including uh, 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 the raw tag and all that kind of feel, that bumps it up in originality. So I'll give that a 9. For that aspect very cool um difficulty this is where i feel the strength of this combo is because like i said even though it wasn't as flashy from a technical standpoint i think it was very very impressive incorporating like the timing on the raw tag like i would like to know how long it took him to, to in training mode to get that set up so perfectly because it seems like it's very difficult so that i'm absolutely giving a 10. okay very nice uh what about uh, technical. In hand, uh, ten for the tech, uh, for the technical aspect as well. I feel like that was a very, it's it's like, <laughs> it's 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 the well it's the well cooked fancy steak of combos. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like it was constructed very well. It was timed perfectly. You know, it's like Garcon the it, it is excellent. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Um, let's check in with President Magikarp next. What did you think about style points on this combo? Style points, um, bonus for the double raw tag, that's definitely not something you see in a lot of PVC combos, but I yeah. feel like on the Joe relaunch, uh, especially watching Meta Turtle, who's another beautiful Joe player, we've seen way flashier, way more stylish follow-ups, uh, out of Joe's level three before, so just falling and then doing a raw tag as creative as that was, I feel like it wasn't nearly as flashy or entertaining as it could have been. So I'm kind of with X Factor on this one. I'm going to give Style an 8, just giving it a bonus for the double raw tag. Okay. And originality, what do you think? 
Originality, I'm going to give it a 10, just because I I have never seen anyone else in the community come up with the idea of, hey, let's throw two broad tags in a combo and see how much damage we can get off of it. Plus, um, intentionally saving counter for the first bait in order to get the final hit was uh, also very impressive. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, difficulty, what do you think? Difficulty, technically, this didn't look like anything particularly challenging, and this is kind of where the combo falls flat for me. I'm going to give it a six. Six, wow. All right, and technical hits and damage. Technical hits and damage. Um, Resource-wise, it looks like he still had a bar left at the end, and I think he only used Baroque once with Duranjo. So bonus for me for not using double Baroque, uh, because that sort of gives the combo a little more practicality in a real match. Um, I'm going to give that an eight. Eight. All right. And JM Crops, what do you think about style points on this one? Seven? I believe you are muted. Yeah, he forgot to unmute himself. <laughs> style? Okay, I'm unmuted. Style, I would give a seven. I think um, style is probably where this combo falters. It's not a particularly stylish combo, other than the aspect of countering the burst. Uh, so yeah, I, I, not, nothing I think we saw was like, whoa, I've never seen that before, but it was cool. All right. And originality. Uh, originality, I give an eight. Uh, I think it gets, it gets bonus points for that aspect. Like I said, of using the counter mid combo. We haven't seen that. Uh, we haven't seen burst generally at all yet today. So a pretty original idea there. Although the actual aspects of the combo seem fairly standard in terms of what we usually see from these two characters. All right. And uh, what do you think about difficulty? Difficulty, I am going to give a nine. Uh, I think there are multiple elements of this combo that are very, very hard. Manually timing the raw tags, getting the links off of uh, Beautiful Joe uh, level three and off of the air mock speed. Like we, we do see Beautiful Joe players do this stuff in tournament, but that definitely doesn't mean it's not hard. It's very, very difficult, I think. All right, and technical, hits and damage score. Technical, I'm giving an eight. Um, I'm kind of taking some points off because basically, you know, this does 100%, but the reason it does do 100% is because it's kind of a reset because it requires the opponent to burst at a very specific time. So like, it's very efficient amount of damage for the amount of meter. But considering the fact that you kind of need your opponent to do what you want them to do in the combo, I think maybe makes it uh, a little less impressive. Although something that I don't think any of us have mentioned is that there is a little bit of added execution for this combo because presumably he had to hit burst, right? You think he had two controllers and then at the right time he has to reach over and burst on the second controller. I do think that's pretty impressive. So uh, I, I did enjoy the combo a lot. It's just uh, taking a few points off because the individual aspects, I think, were somewhat standard. Hmm. And uh, what, what was the score for technical uh, hits and damage? Sorry, did I? And I'm not hearing okay. you once again. Yeah, you have muted yourself again. Why do I keep doing this? It was an Ocho. <laughs> it was an Ocho. Give it the Ocho. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> okay, I'm marking down Pops' score and once again not accidentally revealing it. <clears throat> So we only have, I want to say this is, yeah, this is the last combo we have for today. So this one comes from, uh, oops, hang on. This one comes from uh, Star Izu, who's a longtime member of the, the community online, also came out in person to uh, Animevo's past. And he has come with a gold light hand combo. So let's go ahead and take a first look at this one. Making sure to get the giant golden tea bag at the end there. It's always now are we including the tea bag in our in our? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's up to you guys. Don't ask me about that. <laughs> so, uh, any initial thoughts about that combo? 
As much as I enjoy watching Lightning Rapid Fire Teabag and probably is my favorite character to watch, <laughs> my first impression of this combo, as harsh as this may sound, is that I think this might have been the least impressive one we've seen today. Oof. Yeah, I think in terms of in terms of technical execution, uh, I don't think we really saw anything mind blowing. But uh, I will credit uh, the originality of going with Lightan and an, a, and a Lightan exclusive combo. Like it has to be done against Lightan. We haven't seen any of those today, so I do appreciate the shakeup that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. I do like that we had a one kaiju battle combo at least. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's good that we got one in here. Um, so, Staryzu also, I did want to, I did want to point out that they picked the uh, the China stage and purposefully broke the bridge during the combo. So let's take a take a look back at this in slow mo. You start out with the launcher. You do a double jab extension, which I think is giant specific to to relaunch. Pick up for the relaunch there. Generate a lot of height because of the double jab one. So Light Ten is way up in the air hit the wall bounce kick break the bridge and you do another launcher into the soft knockdown sweep into the otg level one extend it into the level three for the gold finger crush and the finish 25 hits 42 billion damage so let's go ahead and check in with the judges on exactly what they thought about it uh level three x factor why don't you start this one off style points what do you think unmute myself <laughs> um yeah i feel like we said before we didn't really see a lot that we haven't seen before there were, there were a couple of things that kind of uh, increased the style a little bit like the bridge breaking and i'm absolutely including the tea bag as far as styling those but didn't incorporate much into the actual combo itself so i'm gonna give it a set all right, seven for style. And what about originality? Again, I don't want to sound—I don't want to sound like a dick, but I don't really think we saw a lot we haven't seen before. I mean, there, like I said, there were the elements, you know, like the bridge breaking and whatnot, and it is giant specific. But overall, it didn't inspire joy, as it were, as much as some of the other ones we've seen. So for that, I'm going to give it a six. Okay, six for originality. What about difficulty? What are we thinking on that? Difficulty, you know, and all the times I've played the games, I think I've only actually touched uh, the giant characters a couple of times. So I don't know if there's anything specifically difficult, but from what it, I could, I'm looking at it, it didn't look like there was anything extremely difficult. Like you said, there was the uh, using the double jab extension, which is giant specific, but I don't think that's particularly difficult. So, but, uh, six for that. Okay, six for that one. And technical hits and damage. Um, I know it's hard because it is a giant character, so it would have been very difficult to get a full 100% combo. But having said that, I think this is the first combo we've had today that was not a hundred percent kill. Hmm. Well, as far as it goes, again, I'm gonna have to give it a six. Six. All right. Moving on to President Magikarp. What did you think for style points? Style points. Um, this, as practical and usable as it was, I don't feel that it was particularly stylish. Um, I feel like this is a combo that we could all learn with Lytan if we spent about two to three hours in the lab with him in the mirror matchup. Mm. So, um, like, a practical, yes. Stylish, no. I feel like I'm going to be the harshest person on this combo because as much as I love this character, this was also, to me, the least exciting combo we've seen today. For style points, just for... I'm going to give it a bonus for the bridge breaking, but for style, I'm going to give it a four. All right, and what do we think for originality? Originality, um, doing a giant specific combo was a good idea. Doing a light hand combo on a giant was also a good idea. But I feel like this is, again, nothing we haven't seen before, especially if you've seen KB and Bambi go at it in the light hand mirror. Um, this is very um, standard light hand play. Um, I, for originality, am also going to go to the four. All right. 
Uh, difficulty. Difficulty? Um, ugh. Again, I, I hate to sound like I'm harsh in the vibe, but just... The, this to me was not the most difficult combo I've seen. This is this is definitely something I I can look at and say that I can probably recreate it within two hours. I'm gonna give that a six. Okay, and technical hits and damage. Relative to the rest of the cast, um, he definitely did enough damage to kill a lot of characters, or at least get close to it. But against a giant. Um, not particularly <clears throat> visually impressive. Uh, gonna give it a five. Five. Okay, and last up, we have J.M. Crofts. What do you think for style points? Okay, I was muted once again. <laughs> it feels good that I don't I don't have to be the hater this time. I'm gonna give it an eight for style. Give it an eight for style? Okay. Nice. <laughs> I'm giving it an eight because, first of all, uh, he broke the bridge mid-combo, which, uh, of course, I appreciate. Uh, they, uh... Uh, did the tea bag at the end? You know, I'll give it an extra point for the tea bag. Uh, the combo itself was maybe a little bit B and B like for my taste, but uh, the extra little touches I think made it pretty solid. All right, and originality. Originality, I'm giving a seven. I'm giving bonus points here because it is our only giant combo of the day, and it's our only combo that only works on a giant of the day uh so again the actual combo itself not that complicated but i appreciate he did some giant specific stuff and he gave everybody out there a little look at what gold lightan can do very nice uh difficulty uh difficulty i think is uh probably this combo's weak spot it doesn't seem very hard to me like i said kind of seems like a B and B. am going with a four on that one four all right and last score of the day technical hits and damage Technical, I'm going to give it a five. Uh, we're kind of given the benefit of the doubt because, again, giants do have a double-sized life bar. So doing 100% on a giant is twice as hard. Uh, but, uh, yeah, not not a super damaging or high number of hits combo. But I don't think you can do that much better for Gold Lightan anyway. So I would say it was just okay in terms of technical. All right. We have this in an actual tournament match. I think we'd be a lot more hype. But because it's a yeah. combo contest, it didn't hype us, hype us up as much. Yeah. Well, and the, the other thing is that, like, if we saw this in a tournament, I think I would just go, okay, there's a and B. I don't think, I don't think it would jump out to me as, like, an impressive combo. I, I think, in a sense, it's almost helped by the fact that this is a combo contest because <laughs> we're looking for something cool and unique, <laughs> which definitely seeing Lightan versus Lightan is pretty unique. Yeah, and out of yeah, like you were saying, out of everything we've oh, seen today, like, just for the concept, it's unique. But in terms of like, in a match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, no, trust true. me. If, 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 if Kevin was playing back. a mirror, if Kevin was playing a mirror, there would be light chain teabagging. Absolutely, in a real match. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I have all the final scores tallied, uh, and I am going to go ahead and, in reverse order, show you guys our top three combos. Coming in at number three is Omega Zero. It's still going. So congratulations to Omega Zero on third place. In second place, we have Issei. Yeah. 
Congratulations to Issei on second place and your winner of the first ever Tatsunoko versus Corona community combo contest is James. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So congratulations to James for winning the first ever Tatsunoka versus Corona community combo contest. Uh, you have won the people's ovation and fame forever. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a $5 gift card to Taco Bell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no real prizes for this. So I really appreciate everyone's like coming up with what honestly was like a lot of really, really cool combos for no real incentive at all. I, I really appreciate our community coming through and doing that. So, uh, and I appreciate you three being I'm, I'm here. Really happy that... Yeah, go ahead. No, all right. James, because oh. even watching it that third, fourth time, it still made me smile, and I think that's the most important reason why it won. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But one thing that i really like is that the the top three i think they each brought something different to the table you know mega zero his combo was so long and so difficult at just bringing the absolute maximum number of hits you can get mm -hmm. whereas uh you know the other two combos were more off the walls zany inventions and just going for pure swag i really really like uh our top three finishers but you know the other entrance did really great as well good job to everybody who entered a combo in this yeah yeah, and thank you again to our judges, J.M. Crofts, President Magikarp, Level 3 X Factor. You guys should go follow all of them on all, all their socials. I know Crofts got a YouTube, right? President Magikarp, you have a secret Twitter or whatever. Level 3 X Factor, you're on <laughs> Twitter and uh, other platforms as Everything. well. So I really appreciate you guys coming out. Um, to everybody in the chat, our next event is next week we have tatsunoko versus corona 8 which is also combined with marvel versus covid 1 to become versus corona so uh if you're interested in any of that either you know hit me up the stuff is on my twitter it's live in the discord as well go ahead and join the discord hang on i'm gonna i believe we have a discord command here yeah there's Perfect. the link for the tvc us UAS net played in tournament discord. So go join that and all the info you'll need is there. I appreciate everyone who came out and watched this. Thank you guys. And I will see you next time. Bye.